So we have an aquarium water tank where uh, the water is filled up to some depth and is putting pressure on both the bottoms and the side of the wall of the aquarium. And right now we are concerned with uh, the force it puts on the wall of the aquarium. So uh, right here, basically. And uh, I've also defined some variables. I've said that W is going to be the width of the tank it gives us, 8 meters. And H is the depth of the water at any given point. So the problem tells us that uh, we're going to increase the water in the tank. So if right now, the water is filled to a depth of 2 meters, and we're going to fill it up to a depth of 4 meters, and we're looking for the force difference on the wall between those points. The tricky thing here is the fact that no matter how high or low the pressure is filled, the pressure that the water exerts on the wall of the aquarium is not constant. Because from the water alone, at these lower depths in the water, there is going to be more pressure acting on the wall here because of the added pressure of the water above it. Whereas at the top of the water, there's going to be pretty much zero pressure added onto the wall of the aquarium. So because the pressure changes with depth on the wall, depending on where the, the height or the depth is or which height we're looking at, uh, you might think we could use an integration to solve this. We could integrate the pressure with respect to uh, the depth, h. And that's true, that would work, and it would be pretty easy as well. But there is an even easier way to go about this. Because the gauge pressure of the water at a depth is equal to uh, the density of the fluid times uh, g times the depth, notice that with pressure, with the, with the gauge pressure in this case, there is a perfectly linear relationship between the pressure and the depth. And because that relationship is perfectly linear, that means that actually we'll be able to find an, we'll be able to find an exact value of the total pressure acting on the wall here just by taking an average, meaning that the total pressure acting on the wall is going to be equal to one half times uh, the pressure at the top plus the pressure at the bottom. So in other words, the total pressure is equal to, and I'm going to call it uh, rho g h at the top plus rho g h at the bottom. However, the thing is, at the top of the water, uh, the depth is pretty much zero. So one of these terms is just going to cancel out. So in other words, the total pressure we're looking for is just one half times the pressure times uh, g, the acceleration due to gravity, times whatever our depth is. And this is the formula we'll need to solve this. So we are looking for the difference in force that the water is putting on the wall of the aquarium. Now remember that the force due to a pressure is equal to uh, that pressure times the area on which it's acting. Now in this case, we've established that uh, the pressure is going to be this little formula right here, one half times the typical gauge pressure formula. But A, the area, is going to be equal to, it's the, rect it's the rectangular area on this face of the aquarium on which the water acts, which is going to be equal to uh, the width of the aquarium, so W, times uh, the depth of the water of the aquarium at any given point, so H. So the force acting on the wall of the equation is equal to the pressure times uh, the area, which is WH. So the H's multiply by each other and become 1H squared. And our formula for the force becomes 1 half times the density times G times H squared times W. And now all we have to do to find the force difference to do a, a depth increase in the water is to take this entire formula for one value of H and subtract it by the exact same formula 
for some other value of h. So we could write this as delta f is equal to 1 half rho g w times h f. I'll say that's the, the deepest point in the water, the, the highest depth of water, minus h sub i squared, which is at its uh, lower point of depth when it's 2 meters. And this is the formula we'll be using. And now we just plug in our values. We plug in the density of water, which uh, the density of water in this case is presumed to be 998 uh, kilograms per cubic meter, times g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, times the width, 8 meters, and then it's uh, 4 meters squared for the deepest point, minus 2 uh, squared meters for the, uh, the lower depth of the water. And performing this math, we get a force difference on the wall of 4.69 times 10 to the fifth power of newtons. And this is the increase in force on the wall of the aquarium if we were to fill up the tank with more water. 